Yo, what's going on, guys? I am Bear DeGidio, and we are back with another very, very exclusive and special episode of the Jackson Podcast featuring the one and only, the greatest to ever do it, 10 toes down, Ric Flair. Welcome. Ric Flair. Thank you. Look at him. <laughs> The champion, live and Thank direct you. in the Jackson house. Rampage Jackson. Yeah, man. We've been waiting for you for a long time. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank I'm glad, glad to be here. Man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. It's an honor. Thank you. Rick was one of the first guys to ever step up and support us for Jackson when we were first kicking it off with yourself, Ryan Sheckler. Rick Flair came through and put together one of the greatest promo videos I've ever seen. Man, I always thought you was lying that you was friends with Ric Flair until you FaceTime him that one time. And I was like, wow, you really do know Ric Flair, man. Because he be full of caps sometimes. Yeah, me and the bad. We know it's terrible. Well. Oh, that's good. Long time. This guy stepped up, came through, limousine showed up, alligator boots, the whole thing, as real as it comes. Ain't nothing. Look at this guy. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing fake about this guy. His life is as real as people say it is. The legend is, yeah. it's crazy to meet him in person. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rick, I want to kick this off. You've been in the wrestling business for almost 50 years. You're one oh, of the most- 50, 52. 52? I told you, Rampage, he says he's been wrestling as old as you. Well, I'm on 45. He's been doing it. Yeah, I started, I started in 72. So what would they be? 75 now, so and I'm still doing it. I'm not wrestling, but I'm- I was in the ring a year and a half ago. Wow. So, yes. you, do you miss it? Yeah. Man. Still do. Because I don't have any aches or pains, knock on wood. No which, aches or pains? Which, which is very unusual. None. Man, I've seen, None. You, I've seen I've, you take some falls. Yeah, yeah, I have. But I don't... Somehow, whether it's a vitamin D or... Basically, I would have to say it's the man upstairs. I don't... I, I, don't, I don't have much range of motion, like, because I've torn my rotators three times. But I don't have any aches or pains. Yeah, it looked good. I mean, last night we were at Nobu. You were dancing around that place. <laughs> <laughs> you like, Where do you see me tonight? <laughs> I was tired last night. <laughs> you didn't wait, seem tired. Wait, wait till we get out here today. <laughs> After dinner, you wanted to keep going. I've I was been like, chasing a librarian around today. <laughs> <laughs> and Money Penny. <laughs> you're, you're still chopping it up. You're still running around town. It seems like you're working every day. You don't miss a beat. For 52 years plus, you've been wrestling. Rick, I want to kick it off with who is the most talented wrestler you've ever seen or worked with? The most talented I've ever seen or worked with? Well, um, God, this makes a lot of people mad. The most talented I've ever worked with is Shawn Michaels. The most talented I've ever seen is my daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, now she's recovering from a serious ACL tear. But yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah she's 5'11", 155 pounds, ripped. She's a level nine gymnast, the corkscrew moonsault, all the stuff she does. There's nothing Ray Mysterio can do that uh, she can't do. Oh, for real? Did you train her? No, 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 no. I had nothing to do with it. But I, as a matter of fact, I didn't, wasn't even sure I wanted her to get in the business. But she took it on, and um, when my, little, when my uh, son passed away, she kind of, like, dedicated herself to doing what he wanted to do his whole life. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. She's killing it, though. I mean, she can do shit. I mean, it's... It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I've seen her out there. She's beautiful, Yeah, you've too. seen her. Yeah, she's yeah. beautiful. 5'11", five, 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 155, ripped. Wow. Unreal. Yeah. It, it seems like the athleticism runs in your family because you wrestled in college, right? Yeah, I did. No, I didn't wrestle in college. I played football. Played football. Yeah, I intramural wrestled, yeah. Got it. Um, But, um, no, she's a much better athlete than I am. I mean, God, God, she ran a 513 mile in the eighth, in the eighth grade. Wow. You remember they used to have that president's physical, physical fitness thing? That, yeah. Of course, the, the, we've gotten rid of anything like that that yeah. creates competition, right? Yeah. She's just running backwards faster than kids. And I mean, she was phenomenal. Unreal. What about uh, Shawn Michaels? What a guy, huh? Yeah, Shawn Michaels. Is, he's the best performer I've ever seen in my life. Shawn Michaels, that's a singer? <laughs> Shawn Michaels, wrestler. Wrestler. Oh, the wrestler. It's hey, two hey, Shawn Michaels. Hey, right? HBK. Uh, is it two Shawn Michaels? Why is the singer named Shawn Michaels? I think that's George Michaels. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I took too many punches. Yeah. My yeah. bad, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many punches. Too many punches? Yeah, I took too many punches over the years. Heartbreak Kid, you don't know who that is? Yeah, I know who Heartbreak Kid is. Yeah. Shawn yeah. Michaels. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's the best. Yeah. What, what made him so good? He could go both ways. You Just know? like Bear. I mean, he could be a... He, yeah. <laughs> no, he, could be, he, he could be a good guy or a bad guy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. And there's enough of... It's, as good a guy as he is, or he could be a prick when he wants to be. When he's younger, he could be a prick, yeah. which made him, you know, which made his character come across like that. But yeah, as far as in talent in the ring and that, I mean, he's the guy that's the reason that the uh, is it Logan or the one with, with us, right? WWE, mm -hmm. yeah. Logan Paul. The reason, or, or Logan has been 
training with Sean. I didn't realize how I picked it up so fast. Mm. But he's been a one-on-one -on -one with Sean. So Sean pretty much just taught Logan. Yeah, I heard he's and, doing well. And Logan's done great. Yeah, he does. So I couldn't figure out how he picked it up so quick until I heard that, Logan, that Sean trained him. Mm. Yeah. You think Logan has potential to be a mega superstar? I mean, here he is. I think he is already. I mean, yeah. in terms of money, he's making a lot of money. I don't know if he'll be a mega super. He's not going to be a Shawn Michaels, but he's doing a fabulous job. Yeah. Is, is Shawn Michaels still doing it now? He, he's just uh, coaching and instructing. He, run, he runs uh, their uh, developmental program, mm. NXT. Do you have any interest in, in starting your own pro wrestling league? Because I'll come wrestle for you if you start. No, no, no. no it's too much, too much work. No, no it's too much work, and it just. Um, I, I mean, you know, it's funny. I have patience, but I don't have. If I tell somebody, if somebody asks me, you know, I tell people this all the time. Would you give people advice? And I, I, I will, if I know that they're going to take it. But if I give them some advice and I see them walking over there, asking somebody else the same question they asked me. And I, yeah. Yeah. If, if it comes from me, it comes from a lot of experience. Yeah. And a lot of know-how. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Shawn Michaels, you talk about going both ways, and we see right now probably one of the biggest superstars WWE's ever seen, The Rock, yeah. is starting to play more of this heel character, yeah, yeah, slapping love, people, I, I running around. I love it. But, yeah, what do you think about that? I think it's great. I think I, I, anything, anything he touches is yeah. good. The Rock is a unbelievable person. Um, they're making a movie on my life now, he and Seven Bucks. Um but he's been incredibly talented. He's entertaining. I mean, he just, he, he did, when the rock walks in the building and the place just goes upside down. I They're making I, a movie I, about I you? Love him. Huh? They're making a movie about you? Yeah. The, uh, three part series, the seven bucks and the rock. Wow. That's the name of it? The company is seven dollars, seven bucks. It's owned by the rock and, and, uh, oh. his, uh, ex-wife, um, and, uh, and then Hiram, Hiram Garcia. And, um, Gosh, I can't think of her first name. But anyway, um, they had a real amicable divorce, and they they stayed in business. And Seven Bucks from, from Productions is a big company. Oh yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember. I know why he's called Seven Bucks. I remember he said that um, at one time that he only had seven seven bucks in his pocket or something. Is that like what that. it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember seeing the interview. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. talking about, about football. Came back from Canada playing football. He had yeah. seven dollars yeah. left. Oh, right. yeah. Wow, he started. Well, he played like, behind Warren Sapp. He, he just started at Miami, but. You know, one that was pretty good. Yeah. Didn't he yeah. play with Ray Lewis too? He played with Ray. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, yeah, at, yeah. That's a crazy. The, lineup bad, the bad boys. Yeah. Did you think about uh, playing in the uh, NFL? No, no, God, I was too slow mm. and too small. Mm. I went to Minnesota to play linebacker, and I ran a five nine forty. They made me an offensive guard the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what the forty yard dash was. I never, I never trained for it. To run the forty, okay. I weighed three hundred pounds. I mean, I was fat. You know, out of shape. I hadn't run a mile since I was a freshman in high school. But what's, what got you into wrestling, pro wrestling? The, my, my, my lack of uh, education. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave they gave me an exit strategy. <laughs> you're you're out. <laughs> one thing one thing I I see a lot of people asking on the internet is why did the Rock start to play this new character with Roman Reigns, start being the bad guy? And it, when I saw him start walking out and doing doing some press and cutting up lines and he wasn't wearing under armor and he didn't have the, the, you know, the bull logo yeah. on him. And I, he's back in those like Versace vests. I go, all yeah. right, this guy's, this guy's hitting something different yeah. back to the, the shades. Like yeah. the whole thing, you could see the perception is different. It's, it, 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 it's what they need. He's bringing, he's bringing color back to the show. I mean, you know, so many of the guys wear their own merch out every night. I mean, good Christ, you're going to buy it whether you're wearing it or not. He comes out dressed <laughs> up and he's, he's, he's in phenomenal condition. And, uh, you know, he just so, so in so much respect for his, his grandfather, Peter Maivia, with the tattoos and everything. And he just, he's just one of the most colorful guys I've ever seen in my life. That reminds me, I, I think I saw a story or something uh, uh, on TV show that they was doing a show about you going back looking for your old robes or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Did you ever find that stuff? We found them, but I can't get them back, you know. They don't want to give them back. Um, no, one, one of my wives took five of them with her. Oh. The average... Hundred and thirty grand, maybe. Man, that's a lot. And then they and they get up on a on a, on a witness stand. And the judge says, "Then can't win." Yeah. A lot of the a lot of those like uh, robes and costumes that you wore when you were coming out. Did you have to go make those yourself, or did the? No, Olivia Walker made all my stuff. She was a, she made all the stuff for. Uh, she's like uh, Loretta Lynn. She made all the stuff for the country western singers. Um, Glenn Campbell, Loretta Lynn, uh, George Jones. 
Anybody, anybody that wore the rhinestones and all that. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's back when she had to put him in, boom, 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 mm. you know, with a press By one hand. at a time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This stuff was expensive to make? Uh, it were cost me like 15 grand back then. What? Back, back in the 70s and 80s, yeah. 15, that's a lot of money back then. Yeah. Just just for your custom, how, how long did you, you use it for, though? I had 35 of them. What? Hey, call, okay, this, 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 you think I walk in here today not prepared? <laughs> <laughs> this, this little thing right here cost me five grand. For real? Just to, just to be on better show. Sure. This doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> oh you don't miss the you beat. Can't, you, can't, you can't buy this at pennies. Man, I need to step my game up. <laughs> hey, he said, don't shop with pennies. He's directing that at you. <laughs> Yeah, hey, he got the he got the Nature Boy Ric okay. Flair Jackson T-shirt on. There Remember, you go. We did that I, last I year. Love that. Unbelievable T-shirt. We did that for all the athletes. Did you give Did members. you get him some? Yeah, we sent him a bunch. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, we always send him jewelry. He's got he walked in with he got the pinky ring on. He got the ten millimeter Cuban link chain on. This guy yeah. don't miss. Yeah. So, he got two watches on. Yeah. Oh whoa, whoa hold up. This is the one that's attached to my pacemaker case. I get excited and, and uh, the librarian wears me out and I fall. <laughs> But you're still rolling, still rocking around with the Rolex on. Just tell her, just tell her to wipe the DNA off, call my friend and leave town. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kicking it off like this. We got the librarians. That's how we're kicking it off. So let's start from the beginning, Rick. The whole world knows you as one of the craziest to ever step step yeah. in the ring, one of the best to ever be on the mat. You you have one of the craziest cut up lines and promo videos. Like I mean, there's. Seriously, no one like you. And I say that with all due respect. Thank you. Thank and we've you. interviewed some of the greats. We had Chavo Guerrero on here, and we had some other amazing wrestlers who are coming on. But when it comes to what you did during your time and your era, you guys kind of set the bar for how media and how, how the game was played, right? Yep. You gave us someone to look up to. I used to walk around with Rolexes calling myself Rick Flair. Yeah. I mean, you gave us the, you gave us the roadway on, on how to pull girls, things to say when you go out, you know, ways to dress. How did your character... How to meet, treat the women of your dreams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see that rampage? Take <laughs> yeah. notes. How did the character come about? How did you build this? I, it's what I got. It just came, it came naturally. I just had to make enough money to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up I, with the I, Rolexes? I just I just fell in love with jewelry. I was, when I was a kid, I loved it. You know, and then the Rolexes, God, I've had what, probably 12 Rolexes. Lost four of them along the way. Heard about those stories. They think, they, just, they think they can leave the room and take my shit with them, man. It ain't cool. <laughs> Wait, would someone try to steal a Rolex from you? I've, I've, I've lost four. <laughs> what did you do if someone stole a Rolex from you? Call the police. Oh, is that what you did? That's what I did? Yeah. What do you mean? Is that what you're going to do when you got two women in bed with you? <laughs> <laughs> Which you one of you took? What, what are you going to tell your wife? <laughs> oh, shit. I don't have one of those. Well, I've had four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from my you first know, mistake. You know, you know the best thing about that? Right. That one of them is remarried. <laughs> <laughs> they can't find nobody better. Yeah, hell no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The best ever do it. <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> so last night we went out. So for the viewers at home, last night Fuck we went out to Nobu. Fuck her to fire a wild bull rider. <laughs> yeah, last night we went to Nobu and it was we heard some interesting stories and we had the time of our lives. Me, Rampage, Rick. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a phenomenal dinner. Yeah. It was good. I'm sure a lot of things that were said last night couldn't be said today. So I see everybody keeping it PG. I'm very proud of everybody here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Rick, in terms of wrestlers, when we talk about, like, the five greatest wrestlers of all time, and I want to kind of unpack your career here mm -hmm. a little bit. I know we have some time with you, and it seems like you're doing amazing stuff. You have the woo chews and the woo energy. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to try one of these chews right now. Yeah, you need it. You need it. That's going to be good. What is that, CBD, Rick, or weed? CBD. CBD. So Rampage, while well, Rampage dives into the CBD, he was scared to smoke weed with you. He said, I don't want to smoke weed. No, I don't want to smoke weed because I won't shut up. You you won't want to smoke weed with me ever again. You won't even want to see me no more if I smoke weed with you. Yeah. I won't shut up at all. <laughs> so before we unpack your career, I want to talk about wrestlers. Everybody debates like the greatest wrestlers of all time, the top mm -hmm. five. Why? How? Can you break down to me like five wrestlers that you feel are just on ahead. the Mount Rushmore? Because a lot of people don't have the... The oh, proper whereabouts, it, it, the history. Well, it's such a tough thing because of the difference in time, but obviously Hogan, obviously uh, Steve Austin. Yeah. Oh. Those are two that are must be. And then um, and, and then you, you could fill the holes with Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Bret Hart. I mean, 
um, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Bret Hart. I mean, it's just hard to say because it's like, you know, like Hogan was so popular in the '80s, right? Mm -hmm. Then along came Steve and and The Rock and all, Mick Foley and Hunter and all those guys. But I think the the most when I say the greatest, I think the guys that created the most impact, and that would be Hogan, Steve. I think Undertaker had a lot of in uh, a lot of uh, a lot to do with their success. Um, and then you'll put The Rock or Shawn Michaels or there's there's so many great ones. Not not you know, not I shouldn't. There's ten great ones. So it's hard to name four or five. So you got You get your Mount Rushmore set rampage. You got to stop eating those things. I'm gonna lose my mind. You ate like ten. You're only supposed to eat two. How, I, how, how many are supposed to eat these gummies? I don't know. <laughs> you got to stop. They taste uh, so good. I, they taste so good. I want to eat the whole bag. But give me the bag, please. Please give me the bag. That's it. He ate like 10 of these things, Rick. I couldn't even focus because I felt I so like, bad. I like gummies. Yeah, good. <laughs> they taste really good. Serving size is one piece, dude. You just chopped up seven of them. But I'm a big guy, though. I think I can handle it. Oh, no. We'll know shortly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but you said it's just CBD, right? I, I do feel kind of tingly already. Oh, no. Rick, what do you got in these things for Rampage? Are we going to be okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd be as, okay. As the owner of the CEO. <laughs> so, hey, are we going to be okay am, with these am things? I, am I just going to be laughing a lot like I'm high? I watched Mike eat two bags. Though. Mike who? Mike Tyson? He's, he's, Mike Tyson eats these things? Oh, yeah, like candy. What do you mean like candy? They are candy. Like candy. Oh, these are candy? Taste I, one. I, I, no, Taste I, don't, one. I don't do weed. What is it? Oh, it's just CBD? Yeah. Yeah. Help you sleep. So it's going to put me to sleep? I'm just right. getting over food poisoning, so I need some sleep and stuff like that. So it's good. Yeah. Well, is that what you need? Yeah, I need some more sleep. Well, you're taking care of me today. You can sleep tomorrow. All right. Hey, let's 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 go out for Taco Tuesday. Tonight. We are. We are. All right. I'm down. That's what you want to do. That's what I want to do with, with with the nature boy, man. He's a he's last a night. He didn't want to go out with us. No, right? I was tired last night. Rick, last night he wanted to call it early, huh? Yeah. 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 That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. We'll get you back. We'll turn up. We're gonna pay Jackson. A team. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna turn up. I get, we got that shit straightened out last night. Oh yeah, I kept calling the expendables. Is but, that Rick? It's eight. Hey, but, but a lot of people do that though, so I don't. I don't trip. <laughs> before 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 the appetizers came out, but he did call it the whole scene. So Rick knew the whole scene. He yeah. loved your whole scene. He loved the movie, and he kept hyping you up. And every time the waiter came, he would go, "This is Rampage Jackson from The Expendables." <laughs> and I would say, "No, no, it's the eighteen. Hey, he goes, "I love that movie too." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd had a couple drinks by then. Yeah. yeah. So you're still drinking, living life. Nothing yeah. slows you down. Well, I'm supposed to not, you know, what I do now is uh, every time I, <laughs> every time I have, because I had total kidney failure, right? Real bad when I almost died. So now, whenever I get blood work done, which is like I get blood work done like every 30 days, if like one little thing is off, I just, Doctor says drink more water, so I, I drink more water and all that ever <laughs> just to, to dilute the poison. I, but but in terms of drinking, like you're a, you're still okay to drink? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah I am. It doesn't slow you down. <laughs> doesn't slow me down at all. I mean, you've been drinking for what fifty years? Since I was fifteen, and you haven't stopped. Uh, well, they put me in the joint for thirty five days. I quit that. <laughs> But when I got, I took that coin and walked across the street and bought a six pack with it. <laughs> We're so proud of you, Mister Flair. <laughs> okay, I walked across the street literally, kitty corner from the joint I was in was a, a, a bar. Put the coin down and ten bucks and bought a six pack. And drank it all right there. <laughs> a six pack in one sitting. Oh yeah, that was nothing for you. Nothing. You want to hear what? When I heard I had to go in, so like Hunter called me and said, "You got, you got, you got to go to the in." Rehab. I go. What do you think I am? I mean, I don't need a problem. I don't, I don't have a problem, which I did, obviously. So um, I left Atlanta, went to the Atlanta airport, and I had four hours before the flight. So in the four hours, I drank. I think we were, we were making a joke. We were testing me. So I think I drank sixteen double kettle ones oh. in four hours. Oh. Then I got in a plane. I drank four Bloody Marys. From uh, uh, and uh, probably three beers from uh, <laughs> from Atlanta to Tampa, landed in Tampa and got a twelve pack and drank that whole thing. They drove me out to Fowler to check me in. They checked me in, and the guy I, I didn't even blow a number. My blood pressure was one twenty over seventy. 
So I called Hunter and said, I'm perfect. I don't need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> How you build up that tolerance, man? <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> Did you guys used to drink on road, like when you were traveling? Yeah, not before match, but afterwards. Oh, yeah. God, it was 3,000 miles. Three, three, we used to drive 3,000 miles a week before we got in that plane. We found that plane, and then we crashed in the plane and had to figure that out. You crashed in a plane? Yeah. Killed what? the pilot. Rope him back in three places. You did? Paralyzed two guys, yeah. It was a, a private plane? 1975 uh, uh, Cessna 310 twin engine, yeah. Oh, man. Ran out of gas at 6,000 feet. Wow. wow. How does that happen? The guy, the guy was lying to us and compensated. We were so overgrossed. You know, you know, I was like 270 then. Johnny Valentine was 250. The pilot probably a buck 80. And two other guys, everybody around 230 or 40 pounds. And we, 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 he got what you call the point of no return. He should have landed in Raleigh and refueled. You know what I mean? But he mm -hmm. thought he could make it. And we actually ended up crashing into a railroad embankment less than a half a mile from the runway. Wow. wow. Yeah. And nobody died, though. Pilot died. The pilot died. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And two guys got paralyzed. Two wrestlers? Yeah, Johnny Valentine and Bob Brothers. And they never... I just broke my back in three places, but I got I healed up good. So. Wow. I mean, you, you look phenomenal. Man, lucky, man. Yeah, you still wrestled. Yeah. I mean, you wrestled for decades yeah, after Yeah, afterwards, that. yeah. How long did it take you to recover? Actually, um, I was back in the ring. I, they told me... Well, first they told me I never wrestled, and then I was, ended up being back in the ring in six months. Bro, that's unheard that's of. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. How do you brace? How do you brace for impact on a plane going? Brother, down? I don't even remember. I don't. All I remember is them putting us back in those days with those like those are the ambulances, like like you see in the, in the World War II, where they put put you on a rack, right? Yeah. That's not like the ambulances now that are tricked out like a like, like a living room, right? Yeah. I just remember. I think we're losing this one. I thought they were talking about me. So I had a note to a girl in my shaving kit, and I told the guy, I go, tell Sheila I love her, but to never come to the goddamn hospital. Because I was married, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> didn't, want some chick from, didn't want some chick from Norfolk blowing down the door. <laughs> tell Sheila I love her, but do not come see me. <laughs> you know what they, they do now when, when you finna crash in a plane, right? They yeah. tell you to tuck your head between your legs. Yeah. You know why? why? So you can kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know how I would be able to handle that. That's crazy. Yeah, oh, it took me a long time to get back in one, man. They started me out. Oh, oh yeah. Ricky, mind flying? Okay. They started me out in a big jet, then a smaller jet, then a 402, a 401. So did they fly you private when you were wrestling? We, we bought a Falcon 10 eventually. Yeah, we flew private all the time. Who's we? Jim Crockett Promotions. What was that? Was that the original promotions you were in? Yeah, Jim Crockett, NWA. Wow. We bought a Falcon 10 and we traveled on that. Mm -hmm. And they would just fly around the key talent in that? The, the top, the top uh, six or eight guys, yeah. yeah I, I was always taught that um, the, the wrestlers, you guys had to pay your own way to get. We to did you. for years. Yeah, I'm sorry, This was like, so I started in 72. And I drove 3,000 miles a week until 19, shoot. Well, but when I broke my back and we started, I wasn't too too excited to fly again, right? So then we, then we finally bought the jet, I think, in uh, like 85 or 86. Mm -hmm. We started going everywhere with the jet. A lot of miles on the road. The guy, I got I had 84 moving violations. <laughs> three driver's licenses. Because I, I had property in Florida from Minneapolis and I lived in North Carolina. All of a sudden, that reciprocal agreement between insurance companies came, and they had to go to court, and the judge goes, you, got, you realize you have 84 moving violations, Mr. Flair? I said, I don't know how that's possible. He said, well, it is between six states, and you have three driver's licenses. I want you to put them all up here under your your sentence of 30 days in jail. So I was, they took me downstairs, of course, my lawyer got me right out, and I went to Superior Court, and the guy Buy me 75 bucks, but <laughs> I was almost 30. No, you don't realize it. I put 120,000 miles on a car a year. Wow. I, yeah. I can't imagine the the travel schedule you guys had. Oh, back then. man. 
Like how many how many nights a week were you wrestling? Every day of the week. Seven days a week. Seven days a week, twice for, on Saturday, twice on Sunday. For how many years? Uh, 18. See, that's why I didn't go into pro wrestling. And you didn't care? You loved it? I loved it. But, but yeah, of course, I had a lot of fun too. But it was, we, nobody gets it. We didn't, we didn't get days off. Easter and Christmas were the big days. Those little big, the big events, twice each day, you know. My. And if I had to go to Puerto Rico, uh, or to which I worked a lot, they have called they have they have what's called Three Kings Day in Puerto Rico. I used to go over there all the time, so I'd have to leave on Christmas Eve because they were worried about me getting there in case I missed a flight or something, you know. Or if I had to wrestle in Dallas, which I did a lot, mm. so I wasn't even home Christmas Eve. Well, speaking of Puerto Rico, you and Bad Bunny have a great relationship, yeah, right? Yes. How did that happen? This is the greatest story of all time. So we were doing the 25th reunion of Raw, and they're doing it between the original building, that little building downtown, and the Barclays Center. Yeah. And uh, so we're standing there, Wendy and my wife, we're standing there. It's pouring rain, trying to get in the back door of Barclay, right? And this kid goes, hey, Mr. Flair, I'm a big, big fan, a big fan. I see, I see you and Carlitos. Carlitos. And so I said, well, well thanks, man. So he, he, he goes, please get me in, please get me in. And uh, so Wendy, because she's just that way, and I said, bring him in. So he comes in, we come backstage and all that. And about uh, six months later, he calls me and wants me to do Shambaya, a video with him. Mm. And that's how he got started. It went, it went viral. And uh, then I did the Latin American... Um, um, awards with them, and uh, we just we were, we were, we were main friends for, you know, for all that time. That's how he got started. Wow, yeah, Bad Bunny. That's huge. how I met him. Oh, he's massive. But so he, well, he, he's pro wrestling now as well. He wrestled. Yeah, he did a good job too. Yeah. He did really good. Did he you came, train he, with him? No, I didn't. know. I think Sean did again too. Mm. Yeah, Sean's getting everybody. Yeah. You Sean. should go. You should go train with Sean Michaels. You should too. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm too beat. I'm too beat up now. But you, you no, still you'd young. be great in wrestling. Yeah. I'm, I'm too beat up. Now. My, my knees and my elbows yeah. and shoulders. I still love fighting though. I was going to be a pro wrestler. That's why I started wrestling in high school. Yeah. But then I just, I just went to a different path and started fighting. Yeah. Well, you did pretty good at that. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I still yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. He's got a big fight coming up soon. You're gonna be doing boxing. You're gonna be doing MMA. I mean, you're not retired. No, I'm not retired. You're still yet. fully in it. Yeah, I'm not. You but, still work out regularly. Yeah, I work yeah. out every day. He got a ring here. I work out. Yeah, cool. but you know, I did some when I promoted a team. We did some something at WWE. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah, me and uh, Murdoch, uh, the uh, shot to a copy that actor that played Murdoch. Yeah, they had us in the ring, and the Big Show was there, and he got mad because I did his choke, his choke slam. Yeah, he got mad, and he said, "Why you had to use my move?" I'm like, "Nobody would let me power bomb him." Yeah. They yeah. won't let they won't let me do my move because yeah. right? I'm known for the power bomb. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that. But you're not doing it to me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's I'm, not, up? I'm not going over the ring with you. I'm not I, a chance. I know how to power bomb. Though. Well, I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> when, <laughs> power bomb Mariana. <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. When we were when we were walking out of Nobu, I, I saw you wanted a double leg. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you went at him. You want to see how fast he's like? Yeah. <laughs> He tried to get a bite of you. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know he he wrestled uh, for real though. I didn't know he did the the, the collegiate wrestling. I had no idea. Me? Yeah, I didn't. I, I no oh, two time state champion in high school. And what state? Florida? No, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, I, I had no idea. Dude, the guy knows that what he's doing. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. stand up on you. What weight class did you uh, did you wrestle? Uh, one eight one eighty and then heavyweight. Oh, oh, that was my weight class. One oh, one one eighty nine. Yeah. Oh, that means he would have got a nice little piece of you. I don't know. I probably would have slammed Ric Flair back when I, 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 I Grammy roll on you. I'd be a gone. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, in 2022, it was uh, you were training. It was supposed to be your last match. Did yeah. you train at all for that thing? Oh God, I trained. It was 2023. It was 2023. Oh, yeah, 22. Yeah, I yeah. trained. I got in the best shape I've uh, ever, since I was 20 years old. Wow. Yeah, and then I had a heart attack during the match. Oh. Wait, what? I had a heart attack during the match. Did you know that? No, I didn't, I didn't know, that. know that. A lot of people didn't know. I didn't know it myself until uh, about six months ago because I went and got a, 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 I go to the heart doctor like every six months because I've got the pacemaker, right? Mm. And they put that on me when I was real sick, not because I had a problem with my heart, but because I had, it was, they couldn't get over the fact that my heart rate was so low. But it was from all those hour long matches. And all the cardio. I used to do 500 free squats every day. 500 free squats, 500 push-ups every day. 
because not not every town you went to these little towns on them had a gym right mm. or i would do a the deck of cards or i would do step ups on a chair you know so my heart rate was like always like 48 it drove it drove people nuts that it was so slow so they put that on me and then um I went to get what's called a uh, calcium which scan, which I'd never had before, because mm. a couple of guys died in our business of heart issues. So it, it kind of scared me. So I went and I blew a number on that. And the guy, you know, they they give you the nuclear distress test, shoot you with the die, you do, put you on the windmill, on the treadmill. I mean, everything, right? So it's two three two days of three out three hours of testing. And this is the six months ago. The, take, the guy takes me in, and if you look at your pie, like if, if you look at your heart, like a round pie, right? Mm. There's a piece of my heart right here, this big, it's black, it's gone. The guy said, you, "The guy said you had, you've had a heart attack in the last two years." I said, "I said I have, I've never, never hurt me." He said, "Did you have you passed out in the last two years?" And during my last match, I passed out three times, mm. and I, and I thought it was because I was dehydrated, so I went in the locker room. I was with the Kid Rock and the Taker. I just drank two bottles of Gatorade and went back out to Kid Rock's place all night long. <laughs> but I had a heart attack. You didn't even go to the hospital. You had no idea. I didn't, I didn't hurt. No, none. I feel great. That's my problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm just, just going to fall off a chair one day. They're going to say, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Get that little son of a bitch up out of here. I mean, were, were you always like this, though? Like, during the beginning days of WWF, were you just drinking and partying every night after, after matches? After I wrestled. Yeah, every day. I'm, I'm, I, I, sleeping's overrated. Sleeping's overrated. Yeah. How, yeah. how many hours do you get at night, you think? My average probably six, seven. Yeah, that's, that's, but if, yeah, I, that's but if I sleep good, I'm, I'm fine. But what about back then? Back then, I shit three hours a night. That's it. So every time you guys would go out, who? who well, it, it depends on the city. If, if, if it, like Chicago is open at four o'clock in the morning, I'm going to bed at four o'clock. <laughs> and believe it or not, L.A. back in the old days was, was only open to one. Mm -hmm. Even out there where you had uh, the Sunset Social Club and all that, yeah, yeah. all those bars closed at one. The Roxy and all that. For real? I thought yeah. I thought they just started that. I moved here 22 years ago. I was complaining about no, that. No, they were they're open later now. Yeah, yeah. yeah 145. But, but my own my, my Miami, they're open at 4 a.m. Oh, yeah. in, in Chicago, yeah. a lot of places. But it all depended on on the city, right? Have you ever wrestled in Tokyo? 68 times. Hell yeah. Yeah, Rapungi, man. Yeah, the Rapungi. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey, Shinjuku, man. That's where all oh, the massage yeah. parlors are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. I don't know about Ooh, that. La, la, you Shinjuku. know about the massage parlors no, no, in, no. in Rapungi? No, no, no. Because I, like, yeah. I didn't like the massage because um, they was always Chinese girls. They wasn't uh, Japanese girls. Oh, really? The ones that I've seen. How do you, what are you talking about? What? They're all Japanese. No. In, yeah, in, in Japan? No, some are Chinese. Are they really? And some are Korean. <laughs> I, got, I never got to know them that well. I, well, <laughs> I know my Asians. For some strangers, I know my Asians. <laughs> what do you know about Japan, Rick? Name it. Name it. <laughs> 68 trips. Well, yeah. 68 trips. Yeah. You've seen Rick, it all? Rick, son, you want Korean barbecue? You want <laughs> massage. Massage, please. <laughs> <laughs> Korean barbecue, I can eat anytime. <laughs> <laughs> How's the massages in, in Tokyo? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, it, it's, a, it's a racket, man. They have booze and hot tubs and all that. They take really good care of you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's very, I mean, it's very healthy. There's nothing, yeah. there's nothing scandalous about it. Oh, I yeah. love that. Any yeah. any good words in Japanese? Me? Yeah. Uh, I, I only told you I only know two words for last night, and I'm going to say it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know any good words? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, what up? You know any good what? words? Cody, yeah. Cody means it. That's cold water. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I learned in Japanese was uh, Sumimasen saying, Koko Jin ski desu ka? What does that mean? Do you like black guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Half the time, like, yeah. Hi. Daisuke. What does that mean? Yes, I like. Oh, wow. Very Impressive. simple. Very simple. Easy. Easy. So it's easy. easy for you to move around, huh, Brett? Yeah. Yeah, you love that you love traveling. I do, and not not so much now as I did, but yeah. But I, you know, but I'll give you a week. This this is what will drive you crazy and why the visit was hard. So when I was a world champion, this is one week, and this may have been duplicated three other times, but one week, Monday, an hour long match with Harley Race in Sydney. Tuesday, an hour long in Auckland, New Zealand. Friday, 
an hour long in um, St. Louis. Still gives a day to get, you know, to take a day and a half to get back there, right? Sunday, an hour and a half, in, an hour match, right? In Atlanta, back to Tokyo for three hour consecutive in, in uh, eight days. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of flying. That's a lot of flying and, a, and an hour long match. Yeah, yeah hour long matches. Oh, I did, wow. Matches one, one, one year I did 300, 330 hour long matches. And one year, one year. Wow. Wow. Well, and what 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 are matches normally like? What are they like? Yeah, twenty minutes, fifteen to twenty minutes. Wow. Why you do Why you do so long? Because back then the rules either they either the champion wins or the guys got to go an hour. They, they didn't want their top guys getting beat, but at the same time, they, their top guys weren't in condition to wrestle an hour, so it was like wrestling myself half the time. So, so some, wait, wait, I don't, not, I not not everybody. There were some guys that were, could do it, but there were a lot that couldn't. So I didn't understand that. So either the champion gets beat or he got to go an hour. Either the champion goes over, wins. Okay. One, one two, three. Okay. But these, these were rules. Or he, you go through. Wow. That and is and part the of promoters didn't want their guys to get beat, and then you leave town, right? Mm. But they're, they're, at the same time, they weren't in shape to, to wrestle for an hour. But was mm. this with the WWF? No, NWA. Oh, wow. Oh, NWA. Oh, NWA. And then, and then when you went over to the WWF, was it a completely different like completely game? Completely different, yeah. And how mm-hmm. how was that for you? It was great. I mean, it, it it saved my life because I the guy that when when Crockett sold the Turner, they hired a bunch of people that weren't even in the wrestling business to run the company, and I was mm-hmm. really became a dysfunctional. I mean, I just I was unhappy, miserable. Guy wanted me to cut my hair. Call myself Spartacus. I mean, come on, come on, Spartacus. Yeah, true story. Cracked me, literally cracked me. So I went. Is it a joke? You haven't seen my thirty for thirty where I'm talking to the sports psychologist? No. So <laughs> I would see the sports psychologist. It's in my thirty for thirty. The ESPN made, and the guy goes, um, then they ask you how many times you masturbate. <laughs> oh, that's, that's personal. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. So I would. I am. You, you got to watch it sometime. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm watching it today. Um, uh, then, then eventually he gets to how many days um, do you drink? And I go, yeah, I drink. He said, how often do you drink? I said, every day at work. Oh, I, you know what? I have seen that clip. Yeah. And he goes, uh, how, many, how many days a week do you work? I, I say seven days. He said, you, you, you drink seven days a week? And you, you you work seven days a week? I said, yeah. He said, well, and what, every week? I said, every year, <laughs> seven days a week. Twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. He said, no fucking way. Exactly said to me. He's a doctor. He used the word after going. There's no fucking way. I said, Yes, absolutely, doctor. By the time I got through with that son of a bitch, he was laying on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing the clip yeah. on, on, on TikTok. Yeah. 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 It's a true story. Unbelievable. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't believe me. Man, I, I didn't believe you. Yeah. I mean, that's so much drinking though. Yeah. What I were you drinking? Me. Yeah, what were you drinking? Uh vodka, beer, a lot of I drank a lot more beer back then because I sweat a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've I've lost as much as nine pounds wrestling outdoors, like you know, yeah, in a, like in 103 degree weather, I've lost nine pounds in an hour. Uh, you know, what? I've actually read that beer is actually better for you than what people say. It, it's actually good for you. You think so? Yeah, beer is. Well, beer, I think you have to accommodate the water definitely, but how could beer hurt you? What the hell? No, it's just a little. I just <laughs> that, that, that IPA it knock, knocks me out, man. That's stuff strong as shit. Yeah, man. but beer is like mid, what? Mid eight, ultra? twelve percent. Most beers? Uh, yeah. I think like six. Oh, yeah, six. Yeah. Yeah. Something light. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. Beer is actually not how, as bad for you. How much beer could you drink back then after a match? Oh, uh, 10 beers easy. That's, yeah, that, that's before that before I got to the hotel. If, I mean, especially <laughs> if I sweat, if I, if I Chavo, wrestled Chavo's hour. in the back saying no. How much, how much, how much beer, Chavo? 10 beers. What? 10 beers to start off. No, no, no. <laughs> Chavo, Chavo, real come quick. Yeah, come on, Chavo. Come on, Chavo. Come here real quick. Chavo no, knows. Chavo, yeah, Chavo, Chavo going to give us the real info right yeah, here. Yeah. Chavo. No, no. I met before I got to the bar. Chavo, I want to know how, how much he actually was drinking back there. Uh, ask Chavito. He knows. I, I, I drank with a whole group. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here listening to half these stories going, that's not true. That's not true. That's true. That's true. Okay, so there's a story real quick. My Uncle Hector told me. And uh, he's out with you, my Uncle yeah. Hector, and yeah. my all my family's hung out with, with Rick for years and years and years. I hung out with Rick many, many times. Me and Hector traveled together for years. <laughs> yeah, try. I mean, my, our wives were good friends. With mm-hmm. one of his his, uh, his wife uh, was third. Third wife. Third, yeah, okay. <laughs> third wife. <I> <laughs> <laughs> they were good friends. They were really good friends. We used to go out, and, you know, they were like fitness people and stuff, and they're really good friends and stuff. But uh, 
uh, I would, you know, try to, you know, he would never let me pay for any, anything. He never, so I would try to steal the only time I could pay if he let me steal the, uh, the check, the, the, te- the check. Yeah. So I would steal like the ones that weren't that big. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are really bad, give me that. No, I'll, I'll leave that one right there. <laughs> but, um, so my uncle Hector told me one time and he goes, yeah, it was, they got to the bar. It was last call. And Rick goes, all right, give me 25 uh, beers and 25 kamikazes. And my Uncle Hector goes, well, who's that for? And goes, well, that's for us. (laughs) (laughs) What? Yeah, I I I usually like kamikazes too. 25 kamikazes, 25 beers for last call. (laughs) For last call. And for two people. And for two people. So here's the woo. Hey, cheers. 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 Cheers to Ric Flair. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, man, he's the legend of all time. I always say that we, we were pretty good in our time. He was great. In all times. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's, that's Thank the you. man. Thank you. Right, yeah. right back I've had Thank you, Chavo. I've had fun with the Guerreros. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the relationship with the Guerrero family? How do you know? Oh, well, I used, to, I used to work for the, for the, for the grandfather, Gory. Mm. Okay. With the Von Erichs back in the early 80s. Mm. And then I've known all the boys. And I've, and I've actually partied with Eddie a lot. Partied with uh, Shavito a lot. Partied with... Uh, his dad, um, Shavo. A lot of trips to Japan with Shavo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've just, I've just known the whole family. We've had a great time. So the relationship outside of WWF and outside of WWE, like with a, a lot of the wrestlers, did you have like a really good relationship like that with other wrestlers? I do some. You know, it, you know, it's kind of like fam- familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah. And I tell you what causes a lot of problems on these podcasts because they, they'll... Uh, you know, like when Hogan, when, when, and I appreciate Hulk saying it. Yeah. But when he says that the reason I, that if I had left WCW to come to WWE earlier, then the other people would have would have wouldn't have made any money, and then that, that gets heat because they were those guys that were part of the Four Horsemen were all really good. Yeah. Man, all but, I gotta but, say is, Ooh, I'm hot as fuck. <laughs> I already knew. I've been trying to hold it in. Bro. I, I didn't want to fuck up while you were talking, bro. I'm high as fuck. Rick, I can't. For the last thirty minutes, I've been staring at him. I can't be serious. I need, I need to wipe. My, hey, I no, need some toilet paper. We need some. What is he supposed to do now? He's been eating these things like candy. Man, I'm hot. This shit is good as fuck. How do you feel bro, right now? Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something. You know, you know. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Real shit. The reason why I don't smoke weed is because I started smoking weed when I was eight years old. Yeah. And by the time I was 11, I smoked this shit every day, yeah. all the way till I started wrestling when I was 17. Yeah. And when I was smoking weed, I was just a different dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was, I was, I'm a street punk from Memphis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't like to get high around my friends because Bro, yeah. I turned back to Memphis like a motherfucker. Bro, then I don't shut up. Rick, Rick, what'd you do to this man, Rick? I didn't do anything. Rick, oh, let me see. Rick, I, 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 hey, real, real talk. I had two of these motherfuckers. If you guys buy this shit yeah. and you don't like smoking weed because weed, you're smoking that shit, well, fucks juice. up your lung. If you just... This, this, this is how I do it. I eat this shit. I had two of these motherfuckers. Now I'm lit. I can so see one. It in your eyes. Next time I'm just gonna eat one. Hey, Rick, just so you know, every time every time we're having a nice conversation, I'm, I want to crack a smile so bad because I'm watching him go like this. Bro, I've been I've been trying to hide this shit. I'm I've been bro. I'm I'm yeah. high as fuck. <laughs> what do you think? You think your CEO? You think our CEO sells bad stuff, man? Now, now I see this motherfucker said the truth. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> Man, Damn. listen, miss, I don't got to smoke weed, and I can just eat the shit. I think shit. Rick's taking a few of these things, too. Have you had some of these shoes this morning? No. No. <laughs> hey, 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 I, I, I can't function on that shit. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, what I, the fuck? I, I can drink, and I can have one of my, if I'm going to bed, but not not, not, not during the day. I got to train after this. What do this. you feel like right now? I feel like, bro, I feel like I smoked a joint. <laughs> so do you feel like you're ready to go to war? Are you ready to go in the ring? No, I've never trained. I tell you, I've never trained. Hey, I quit smoking hey, weed years Adam, ago. Adam, she eat them like candy right who, who eats this shit like candy? <laughs> she does right what is going she, on right now? The she is a pirate. Your whole crew upside down. <laughs> she is a pirate. Man, I'm tell you, I, know, I know about weed. Well, my, my time when I learned how to smoke weed, I was probably 12 years old when I actually learned how to really smoke weed because my cousin picked me up one time with, with two of his friends. Yeah. So it was four of us yeah. in a car riding around Memphis and we smoked nine blunts. I'm hey, talking about I'm, big I'm, blunts. This is the guy's honest truth. She weighs 108, 109. I've seen her drink 10 old fashions, smoke three joints, and eat two of these. What? That's a Ric Flair gang right Oh, my there. God. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. how you get initiated hey, yeah. the Ric that, Flair gang. That's what you got to hang in on today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. <laughs> so, 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 Rick, as one of the pioneers of this lifestyle for wrestling and kind of 
you know, this is what a lot of kids in today's time idolize and look look up to you for, for being such a trailblazer when it comes to being a rock star. What were the early days of WWF like? Break it down for me. Who you were working with, what it was like backstage. Oh, it was, really it was, it was great. I was, I was working with Hulk and uh, Macho Man. Oh, yeah. Ted oh. DiBiase, Roddy Macho, Piper. Macho Man? Yeah, Roddy Piper. I mean, re- re- some really great guys. That's a nice lineup yeah, right there. Yeah, for Kurt Hanning, I had a great time up there. I mean, that lineup of, of, of names Man. is probably just yeah. the legends, pioneers. All the yeah. legends. Bre- Bret Hart. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a great time. What was the relationship backstage with all those guys? Great. Great? Great. Everybody was cool with each other? Everybody was cool. Everybody was making money. Everybody so, got along. Back then, yeah, that's the one thing I always wondered. Like, Camaraderie. Like, that's what I missed the most. The day I retired, I, I, was, I was just lost. Mm. Not going to the locker room, not talking to the guys. I mean, mm. you know, it, 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 I just really, I, I was lost. Mm. Yeah, I could see I could see the the lifestyle of being on the road 365 days out of the year and then all of a sudden just stopping that had to be oh, hard. I, I, I went on a cruise with my wife and I wanted to get off the boat the next day. Oh, I mean, really? I, I liked her and all that, but I just I just missed it. It's like a big boys club. You're hanging out with the boys yeah, all the time, having fun. Yeah, fun, laugh. I mean, have so much fun. Man, they had a life. Yeah. They lived a life, You man. lived a life. And that crew, did you guys hang out with each other outside of wrestling, though? Yeah, I know yeah, some of battles of, and feuds. Lot. You guys would go to bars together? Yeah, yeah. Well, by that time, everybody knew that it was that it was choreographed. Got it. So, but in the seventies, you could never hang out with somebody. No, but no one. I mean, like in that airplane crash, I was in. If that one guy walked out of the plane, if he hadn't made the building that night, it would, it would have killed the territory because there were three major angles in that airplane. Mm. I mean, three th- things that would have without without one component, people found out we were traveling together. <laughs> Back then, it was, we called it cafe, but nobody knew that we were friends behind the scenes. Mm. Oh, wow. What about Hulk's relationship and Macho Man? Like, a lot of people always wonder your relationship with them outside of the ring. Perfect. Really? I see, I, I just saw Hulk on my birthday last week. Really? Yeah. And you guys remain friends all these years, huh? Yep, sure have. Yep. He, and he's really good. He got, got, just got married, found a nice one, and he's doing great. He's a great guy. I met him. Yeah, he, I met he, him yeah. He's, yeah. he's got the health issues that are driving him crazy. He's, Ten surgeries on his back, both hips, yeah, and shoulder surgery. I mean, he's been he's been through the hell. What but, What was the relationship in terms of getting ready for a match with guys like Macho Man or Hulk? Like, how would you guys prep for that? Well, Macho was one of one of the guys that wanted to talk it over with me. I never talked. I never. Me and Hulk never talked. He did. I, I just said it's like it's like riding a Greyhound bus. Just sit on and I'll do the driving. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I even, I never, I never talked to Hulk about a match. Really? For real? No, he trusted me. He knew I knew what I was doing. That's wow. that's crazy love for each other. Yeah. Because you guys are really. I I, each other. I I can't tell. For me, I got to hear the crowd to know what's going on. Because you can plan out the great and and, and uh, Shabito can tell you this. You can have the greatest game plan in the world. You can walk out the door and the crowd is going holy oh, shit to this and then. These guys, they don't. It's not because they can't. They don't have the. They don't have the experience to change it up on the fly. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It's. 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 And and it. You know. Then. Then of course they're more interested in what the fans say than what the promoter says. Yeah. The promoter you work for, let him tell you what to do. But they go and look on the internet. No, this was that. This and then. Yeah. The the internet and the and the fans interaction. I respect their interaction, but you can't listen to the internet because you came before that. No, you yeah, can't, you can't. The can't fans was less accessible to you. Didn't you couldn't? I, I, didn't, to you know, I, well, I can't turn on the computer now. <laughs> I, I don't want to. Yeah, but back then, Rick, like a lot of people talk about, if you go read like these Reddit forums and a lot of our YouTube comments, our Discord, our Jackson Podcast Discord, they ask like the relationship between the the wrestlers back then it seems like the media was more dynamic the you guys were larger than life you were considered like these gladiators you guys were looked at like achilles like real warriors yeah. and in today's time it's more of this storyline more like actors it's not even like people aren't feeling as inspired by some of these characters why yeah. do you think that is well it, it it's not because of the work rate because the guys work hard we got guys who, yeah i mean hurt all the time i think we've had oh help me out here Shavita, but i think we've had uh, Seven broken necks in the last ten years. Jesus, Damn. so I mean, guys get hurt. They, they, yeah. they do. They do these moves now that are just insane. But at the same time, they're getting hurt. You know what I mean? And then, mm. but now they have guaranteed contracts. In our day, if you got hurt, you didn't go to work. You didn't get paid. 
Mm, damn. So, yeah. That's so, crazy. That's crazy. So it it it, it does it's no reflection on the work and the hard work. It's just that they rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And I mean, I just couldn't do that. And I mean, yeah. Uh, the, little, the little bit that I'm involved now, but I sometimes I have to go to the show at, at one o'clock and I'm not on until I'm like eleven o'clock and I mean I just want to kill myself. <laughs> I want to get there like in the old I used to, in the old days I'd get there at five, by thirty six, be in the ring by nine, be out of the ring of a hour match by ten, ten thirty, and the in the bar by eleven. <laughs> Ready to go. Mm. Name me the town, I'll tell you the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I mean, Name me a town. Let me think here. Um my town, Memphis. Memphis. Um What's a good bar for you in Memphis? I'm trying to think. Memphis, you might have me there. So I, I wasn't in Memphis that much. You wasn't in Memphis? I, I, was, I was on Beale Street, but I can't think of the name of the bar. Oh, yeah. Are you from Memphis? No, you're not I, from Memphis. I'm born there. you born in Memphis? Yeah, I'm adop adopted, remember? Oh, that's right. You're yeah. born in Memphis. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, that's why I used to watch all of my races. Raised on a mountaintop, Tennessee. Green is land and the land of the free. <laughs> born he, got he, got, he got Memphis in. blood, and now I see why he like that. Hell yeah, he got Memphis he, blood. That's why I'm like that. But he, but hey, no, I'm no, not on hey, his level though. Hey, why? hey, hey I, I'm his largest white brother. <laughs> <laughs> in what way, Rick? Huh? I don't know. ask him later on. <laughs> <laughs> why are you so high? I'm shit. I'm on his wall. Rick, look at this guy. I'm this fucked guy up can't on, even, He keeps I, looking at me like I'm high. He I'm, keeps staring I'm at me. I ain't lying. I ain't lying to y'all. I ain't lying to y'all. Okay, so Rick, is it true that you had a record-breaking match in North Korea? There's this photo with yeah. Muhammad Ali. Oh, this is a true photo. I yeah. thought it, the photo was photoshopped, well, and then no, I saw it online. 190,000 people. Okay, so you went to North Korea? Yes. How was North Korea? Horrible. Never going back again. And Dennis Robinson tried to get me to go twice. I said, Dennis, I am never going back. What, what did you see in North Korea? I wrestled Anoki, who was Korean, but he was a promoter in Japan. Yeah, I know he knows. Anoki, big, very famous. With the big chin. I wrestled him, yeah. Uh, and we drew 190,000 people. Wow. And it was you, Ali, and Anoki? Ano Anoki and uh, Ali went with me. It was like, like a peace games. It was supposed to be me, Ted Turner, Jimmy Carter, and, I don't know, and then we made, ended up just being me and Ali and uh, some other people, and it was... They took our passports. I mean, it was brutal. In North Korea? Yeah, separate hotels. Guy, the first thing the guy looked at me, looked at my Rolex watch, he said, I make six American dollars a week. I could never buy that. I, I wanted to say, we can have this one. Get me home. <laughs> <laughs> was it scary? Yeah, it was. How long you was there? I was there for, well, I was supposed to be there for seven days. Ended up being there for nine that is crazy. So who was the president? Yeah, so the, fir the, the first night they had matches going on, right? And I'm sitting there with the sports minister up in a press box. And he goes, that doesn't look like it hurts. I said, oh, it hurts bad. Does that really look phony? I said, that, 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 that's not how I wrestle. My shit's real. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was scared to death. I'm not, <laughs> you were arguing with the North Koreans? No, no, people? I wasn't arguing. I was lying to them. <laughs> they spoke yeah. English, though? These people talking to you? Uh, yeah, the guy did a little bit, you know. Wow. That's crazy. Were you scared of getting thrown in jail or anything? Do what? Were you scared of like getting thrown in jail or anything for being? I wild? was at the end because you remember Mike Chinoy on CNN. That remember that name originally? You can Google it. Yeah. They wanted me to make a statement saying that after they want me to go on public record as saying that after being in North Korea, I could understand why they they could defeat the United States easily. They and made you say that. They, they did. I didn't say that, but that's what they wanted me to do. I understand what you're saying. Now. Yeah, I yeah, couldn't possibly make that statement. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's but I'll, crazy. But, but if I had to get, on, if I had to say it to get on a plane, <laughs> and I was going to. Jeez, we 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 flew back to, from North Korea to Nagoya. Yeah, I got off the plane and kissed the ground. I went, oh God, wow! So Bruce, I happy to be back. And he, oh, that North Korea is scary, man. Oh, fuck. so it's just eerie, huh? Oh, no, we're, we're Ali and I are at Marigold Hall, which is beautiful. It's their their, their version of the White House, right? I mean, it's decorated beautifully. The, the flower, the flora, I mean, the, the uh, landscaping is immaculate and everything. But the guy was talking, all he was talking about is killing everybody in the United States, right? What the fuck? And so Ali said, no wonder we hate these some bitches. And I go, don't start talking now. You ain't said a word. You ain't said a word in two days. Don't not start talking Yo, now, please. Jesus, just be whoop. <laughs> 
so, 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 so Ali nope. was ready to uh, pop off. Yeah, he was ready in, to in pop Korea. off. Yeah, I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Hell Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell Ali, yeah. yeah. You ain't talking two years and two days. I don't start talking now. Hey, can you imagine? Listen, you know Muhammad Ali. Can you imagine him telling Muhammad Ali, big mouth ass, hey, shut the fuck No, 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 no. I didn't say that. No, I went. No. <laughs> Were you really no, nervous? No, no, I, I said, <laughs> How nervous were you when all these started have been talking? The same shit. That motherfucker talk his ass off. We up next thing you know, we out there fucking mining pigs and shit in North Korea. Stuck out that motherfucker because they're big now, fast motherfucker. Can't shut the fuck up. <laughs> shit, I would have said the same shit. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, shut your ugly ass up right now, motherfucker. We got the woo choose here. I want you to have one more. <laughs> I want you to have one more. Remy, just nah, good hell no. Nah. One more. <laughs> Man, I'm probably good off this shit all day. Yeah. Listen, but I'm going to tell you something, though. I'm going to tell you something. Crazy. Remind me. Ali don't hey, care. Hey, he hey, hey, nobody. Listen, listen, listen to this, though. Listen to this, Unreal. though. Unreal. He told a story that MMA people kind of know half of the story about because Muhammad Ali fought Inoki. Inoki in the first ever MMA fight yeah. that we yes. know of. Yes, yeah. that is true. And, uh, and he uh, ruined all his legs. No, he, he didn't. He, he kicked his legs. His legs never. His legs were never as good again. That's what's wrong with Reed the Bull right now. Yeah, he was. He was kicking his legs. Yeah. Wait, was it a real fight or was yeah. it staged? Yeah, no, it was. It was a real fight. See, they don't know how to. They don't know how to rehab their legs after they get kicked. I thought the Inoki Ali fight was like no, a wrestling no. match, like a staged no, fight. No, it, it was supposed to be a stage, but Ali, the only offense, Inoki wouldn't come near him, so he stayed low and kept kicking him in the legs. Were you there? No. But, but I mean, I know. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Know the story. Yeah, because you met, legs never came back from it. You introduced wow. them too, right? Yeah. So, I didn't know. I did not introduce them. Okay, but I, okay. I, I knew them both. That is, I, I am fascinated that Ali is in North Korea. And Muhammad Ali is ready to pop off in their White House, and Ric Flair's got to tell Ali, <laughs> "Yo, please don't start." What would you have done? What would you have done? You think about it, put yourself in his shoes. He's in a motherfucking place like that in North right, Korea. Well, I whispered, but, guys. I didn't. I didn't no, go, no, no, no. I didn't go. Shut up, Ali. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, he, please. I would have been, so been so scared. No, I would have been so scared. I would have said, "All right, but if we fight, you fight." Like yeah. not me. I would have told yeah. Ali, he got to fight for both of us. Yeah. Would, I wouldn't be able to do anything. We're in North Korea. I'm just and saying. Ali's well, we, telling them, you ain't beating America. Dude, that's why everybody loves Ali. That's why I, everybody loves you. You and Ali are in North Korea I, telling them America is still the best. You're in their White House on territory. Yeah, yeah but then but then you have to, he had to, do, what he did, was, he just don't understand what he did. Man. I he saved both of them. Yeah. He saved both of them. Because they, they all crazy over there. He yeah. told him he had to tell him to be quiet. I'm just asking you. I what, couldn't do that. You couldn't do it. I couldn't it. tell Ali to be quiet. Hell no. Thank you. You you would have got both of y'all fucked up. He he saved the motherfucker. No, but he's I, a hero. I, I just whispered to him. And then what happened after that though? He, he listened. He, to he didn't. He didn't talk anymore. Did he say anything to you after? Oh well, yeah, when we were leaving, he said, "Fuck these guys." <laughs> but he knew you was right though. But yeah. he respected you then. He yeah. knew you was right when he thought about it. Yeah. Like, he ain't no dummy though. No no no. He respected you for sure for that. No, I I, I don't think that he thought they would ever keep him. Does that make sense? Ali could pretty much write his own ticket no matter what he did, right? Yeah. yeah. But they might have kept me. <laughs> yeah, fuck, that. <laughs> fuck that. I could still be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the uh, uh, a concept of having Ric Flair and Muhammad Ali in North Korea is like a movie. Like that should be yeah. its own movie. That is a fucking movie. It, yeah, it, it, it is a. They made up. They made a, a document. They made it. No, they need to make an action movie about this oh, shit, yeah, man. That's yeah. what the world come to right now. Yeah. We want to see some exciting shit. Not the documentaries that much. Yeah. That's there's another. There's another famous story. Is Jake the Snake tells an infamous story about uh, being on Andre duty and having a match with him. Were you ever on Andre duty? What was oh, Andre I drove duty? Andre around for a year. Really? I, I took care of Andre when he was John Ferrer before he became Andre the Giant. Oh no way! I drove him for a year. That was fun. What, what, what I, was, I was with the night he drank 106 beers. Wait, what? What? I was with him the night he drank 106 I heard about beers. this story, and it's in the Guinness Book of Rare Records. I, I don't know if it is or not. Wait, that's yeah, a real it's story, a, too? Yeah, it's a real story. It's 106 beers he drank from 11 o'clock to 4 a.m. Why so many beers? Because he, he could drink. I've seen him drink two gallons of wine. What the fuck? He was a big No, no, I'm talking, I'm talking about between on a, on a two-shot day where we had to drive 200 miles. He drank a gallon of wine, drank another gallon of wine. When he got in the building. What would the guy eat? Uh, he ate a lot, but he drank more and drank more. <laughs> Jesus. We were flying to Tokyo, and he drank every every mini bottle of vodka on the plane. <laughs> on a 747. I mean, assuming other people, so let's say they had two or three, right? Mm. But they carry enough, you know. Yeah. Who drinks every mini bottle of vodka on a plane? Wow. And how, how talented was he as a wrestler? Oh, he was really talented until he got real heavy. Got it. Mm. 
His back got so bad he couldn't do anything. How heavy was he? Do you remember? 560. Damn. Five, you had to five. wrestle him at 560? Jesus. Uh, I, when I wrestled him, which was a ridiculous, he probably weighed about 520. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. So, he said that yeah. shit like that. Yeah. He said that shit like it was a little. Oh, yeah, yeah, five, yeah. 520. Feel... Only 30 pounds off 560. 30, yeah. 40 pounds. Yeah. But, but in terms of like a star presence, did he just have it off the break? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah he, you talk about a guy that had no. People say Ali couldn't go anywhere or Michael Jordan and that. He couldn't walk anywhere, man. Yeah, I mean, through the airport. Yeah. You'd be walking through the airport, you know, you'd hear, boss, come drink. Oh, God. I got to work tonight. Oh, it's okay. You okay? Bring the boss a drink. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> okay, Andre, no. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Drink. Imagine the lineup of wrestlers and the talent you've gotten to work with over the years. Uh, I mean, you're just, I've, you are a living legend in the I, game. I've, I've had the, the the luxury of wrestling everybody. Yeah. Do you feel like there's anybody that has more experience than you in this game that's still, that's still this active, still this young looking? No. No. Not a chance, huh? No. No. You spent time with Triple H over the years, being in the stable with him. How impressive was his transition from like WWE superstar to like head of creative? Have you seen this? Oh, good. Very good. good. Yeah. He's, he's a student of the game. Really? Yeah, he's, he's a real student. What do you think makes him so special? The fact that he studies it. He, he, has, he pretty much has his whole life. Yeah. And he, and he was really good in the ring himself. He's got, his damn career got cut short. Mm. A heart attack. Yeah. Um, I always said to him, he needed to have a last match. and No, no more than I said that to him. Two months later, he had a heart attack. Mm. Wow. But he's always been very creative. Yeah. Yeah. And was he? Would would you consider him one of those elite during that time of Stone Cold Steve Austin? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to leave his name. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, of course. I think of him now as more in, in management. But um, yeah, he was a big part of it. Mick Foley was too. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. In terms of like um, the the creative from your point of view, we see a lot of transitioning of of guys that you know kind of started this, like say Vince McMahon, for example. And now you have this new generation of creative running it. Do you think that it's a loss, or how do you think the WWE will do without a guy like Vince McMahon, you know, running? Well, the they're shit? they're thriving, guys. I mean, they're yeah. WrestleMania sold out. They just sold out in Australia. I think they're going to. Um, I, God, I think they're going to Paris for SummerSlam. I mean. The European markets are just huge for them. Got it. A AEW actually got a, uh, sold out again. They're going to be at Wembley Stadium. So wow. AEW, the rep in Europe, in Europe, wrestling is really big. It is everywhere. I'm going to Dubai. A sheik is flying me over to uh, Dubai with this uh, stuff that I'm involved with with Adam and uh, what, what do you Trey in and Dubai. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I don't know, Adam. You probably know more about it than I do. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, yeah. yeah. Cryptocurrency stuff? Yeah. Man, you stay so active. You got a million. Are you okay, Rampage? Well, you think I was lying when I told you I was hot? No, but I see you going like this. You ain't it's cold drinking. As fuck in here and I'm no, but you ain't as drinking. Fuck. You ain't drinking anything and I see you no. swallowing something. Bro, I'm trying to hold my shit together this is for the podcast. And you keep bringing it up. Rick, I'm Rick. over here minding my own business. You know what I'm saying? I chime in when it's time for, for something for me to say. It ain't nothing for me to say. I'm, hey. gonna, I'm learning. I, hey, this is the thing, though. He don't know. I'm your biggest fan. He don't even fucking know that. I, you can't even see him the way you're I talking know, but to him I'm, 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 I'm Mix like it in water and have some more I'm right here learning this shit. And, here, you, know you need a hoot you. <laughs> no, hell no. Yes, I ain't having no more. <laughs> Fuck off yeah. with that shit. Hey, we, I'm hiding the motherfucker. I'm trying not to fuck it out in front <laughs> of the legend. And you calling it out, no, man. What I the just, fuck? I saw you drinking something, but you weren't drinking anything. I was anything. drinking it water, man. I'm trying to Rick, it scared me. The guy was drinking something, but he wasn't drinking anything. It's like a ghost. I said, what is he? What's in his hand? No, I'm right here. Why you keep looking that way when you're talking to me? We, we got Look a, how high this man is, Travo. Get this got, man a Gatorade. Got, hey, just so y'all know off camera, we got some cool, come on, we got some cool motherfuckers out here uh, watching it live, man. We, we normally don't let a whole lot of people in here live, but we got a legend in the house and one of my friends, and he was my neighbor. Chavo, know me. How many times you ever seen me high, Chavo? <laughs> Never. I never get high because of this motherfucking reason that now I take two of these damn chewies and I'm with the legend. Like, I'm your biggest fan. I, you know, I, I started off watching wrestling as a kid because my older brother. Yeah. My older brother's name, Dale. Yeah. And he, he used to take me to the wrestling in Memphis when they yeah. had it on, on, on channels. What, a Channel 6 or whatever? On three yeah. on Sundays yeah. every, or something? Every, every Monday night. Yeah, I used to, he used to take me. He used to get a two tickets. My dad used to take me and him. Yeah. 
I, I used to go watch that shit when I was little. Then I, that's why I wanted to be a pro yeah. wrestler. I used to wrestle with um, Sheldon Benjamin in the clock in college. Oh, Sheldon's good. Yeah, he's good. He's huh? Real good amateur. Yeah. I got water right here, man. I know. I just feel bad. Yeah, Sheldon could hang his own, could hold his own with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. We, used to, we used to play around, you know, yeah. the, your style. Yeah, Sheldon was tough as hell. How good of a wrestler yeah. was Brock Lesnar? He won the NCAA's. No, I mean WWE. Oh, real good. Yeah. He, he became a really good performer. We all came out of Lassen, all three of us. Yeah. yeah. Brock, oh, yeah. College yeah, Brock, wrestling. Brock Lesnar was there at Lassen. Sheldon Benjamin yeah. was at Lassen. That's, yeah. why, I, that's yeah. why I went for a little bit. Dude, Brock was insane at wrestling, insane at UFC, insane in WWE. The guy is like a yeah. full-blown athlete, huh? Yeah, well, huge. Did huge you get athlete. a lot of chances to work with him? Uh, I want to probably wrestle him probably four times. But, I mean, he took care of me. He, 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 Brock could pretty much do anything he wants to do in the ring. Yeah. So strong, but he he, t- he, was, he took care of me. Why did he come over to MMA? He did well over there with us, but I was just wondering why he, why he would switch sports like that. For money. Mm. He was making probably $12, $14 million a year with WWE. Wow. Yeah, but maybe for 25 dates. You know what I mean? $12 million wow. a year? He's easy. That's more than what MMA fighters was making back in those days. Yeah, and his... Um, I wasn't I mean, making I'm, that. I'm, I'm just taking a guess, and I'm sure his merchandise sold like crazy. I just thought that he probably was making more money over there, but then he come and do our type of fighting, which is like, yeah, it's like it's a lot. Of, it's a lot more on the line. It's yeah. the most the most embarrassing thing in my job is is getting knocked out. Yeah, that's like yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy that you talk about merchandise. Like, is that a big thing for wrestlers oh, to get a piece merch, of that? Merch, it's huge. Why is that? Because guys like Steve and that Steve Austin. Sold that that three sixteen T shirt. It's still one of the most popular shirts out there. He gets money from that. I'm sure he still does. Yeah, you wow. still see it in the audience. You know, Steve Steve had to retire at the age of thirty nine. Can you imagine if he'd been able to wrestle into his forties? How much money he left on the table? We broke his neck when he was thirty nine. Oh shit! Is that when he got like pile drive? Pile drive, yeah. Yeah, and he got cracked. Right? It was a uh, Owen, Owen Hart. Yeah. yeah. Because I remember watching that video of Owen Hart in that leotard, right? Yeah. And he was like standing around the ring, and then yeah. he. Uh, Stone Cold gets like carried out by the refs. His yeah. legs are broken or, yeah. or like shattered or whatever. Neck, neck is broken. Yeah. And he couldn't, he was like paralyzed or something. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard any big numbers of wrestlers that made like a phenomenal amount of money with merch? Uh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, when I, the first week I started in WWE in, in, in 2001, I was in Anaheim, right? So I said to the merch guy, I said, how, how, how's the merch doing? It did a standard question, right? He said, we had a big night tonight. We sold 8,316 T-shirts and 7,000 Rock Mm T-shirts. Think about that. Wow. And and, and they sell those shirts for 25 bucks a piece. They move. One night. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Are you still... When when we did SummerSlam in England, what was that that supersonic jet? They don't have it anymore. Um, The one that was so hot you couldn't put your hand on the windows. Small, skinny one. The Condor? The Condors. Yeah. yeah, we had we had, we had to fly that with more merchandise back uh, to to a Wembley uh, Stadium. Wow, the United States. Oh, so States. WWE had it had it cemented oh, yeah, on the yeah, merch game. Yeah, and and how does that work? Like, are you still signed with WWE? No, no, no. I'm with AEW now. Oh, you are. So you can do whatever you well, want. Well, see, if I was with WWE, I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff I'm doing with Adam, and I'm making a lot more money. I make I'm making much a lot lot more money now than I ever made wrestling. Wow. Mm, wow. Yeah, just because I got to meet these guys, it worked worked out at the perfect time. But did WWE take care of you when you were with them? Or Oh yeah. Oh but, yeah. But I was I wasn't a big big star with later on. Yeah. When I was when I first went there I was, but later on I was just just lucky to be there. And you know, mm. I'd I'd lost my self confidence and all that by then. Mm. So but I had a I had a phenomenal time with yeah. them. Yeah. What's up with the video with Michael Chandler? It seems like you wanted to fight him at a bar. Me and Mike are good friends. <laughs> yeah, so did you really want to fight him? No, no, but I, I said, let's do this. And then I said, think you can take me down? <laughs> he did, boy. <laughs> he took you down? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, said, I said, I'm not going to let you. <laughs> he said, you, don't want, you won't need to. <laughs> so what you still you- wrestle. You still wrestle. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I would only... One thing I gotta worry about is I'm on blood thinners. Mm-hmm. But Nick, you're not gonna hurt me. I mean, Nick, yeah. You know, know, he don't understand it. Wrestlers, we will wrestle anywhere. This is part of being a wrestler. Why do you stare at me like that? Because like, you don't know. Because you don't know. Like yeah. I asked, that's what why mean, I, asked, I don't know. I'm a wrestler. I saw him and I asked to, another wrestler. I saw he, him he trying to fight you at Nova last night. I, he played he state. wasn't scared of you last I'm, night. I'm asking him. Oh yes, I was. I was playing. 
Yeah, no, no, you weren't scared. Oh, yeah, scared. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. you weren't scared. I, I, I was scared. No, that. don't tell me that. If I didn't know him, bring my dreams. If I didn't know him, bring my dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fambo, this is what wrestlers do. We wrestle. I asked him last night. I asked him, do he still wrestle? Because that's what that's something we do. You actually think I would take out Rampage Jackson? Not a chance. No, you two times say chance. I might have my back against the wall. No, in front of all the girls at Nobu, you said, "Come get some, little man." I know because I know the girls will help get get him off me. He was calling you shrimp tempura last night. Oh man, man. And, and you were ready to fight too. No, no I told me we, we, we wrestle one... though. We do, man. No, That's Rick would have doubled. No, watch this. Watch, watch. He knows this. Give, give me this. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Turn my hand. Ah! <laughs> ah! Yeah. ah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> That That's is right. WWE. That's yeah. wrestling. Here, do to me. No, fuck off. Do man. to me. You ain't no wrestling, man. I know wrestling. <laughs> I'll, do to, here, I'll do to you. No, he he hey, I don't, hey, I don't trust Barry. He probably just trying to touch my hand. No, no, no. Because you wrestle. Let me see you <laughs> no, do it. No, that fast, man. I did, I did it. That's all I did with I want to see you do it. <laughs> man, listen, man. Woo, I'm high as fuck. They trying to fuck with me, man. I ain't stupid. Dude. Listen, man. I ain't stupid. When, <laughs> when people that don't smoke weed and they see other people high, they try to fuck with you. Yeah. You know before uh, before the alone. the Rick, before the Ric Flair drip song came out with uh, Offset and Twenty One Savage, did they talk to you and like did the Migos? Did those guys talk to you? Like how'd you how'd that song come about? The damnest story of all time. I just got out of the hospital. I I actually had the stoma bag on, so I had a, I had a stoma for a year mm -hmm. when I got out I mean, the bag right attached to my intestine, and I just got out of the hospital. I didn't have an agent. Oh wow! So they made forty eight million. I made thirty nine grand. What? What? Yeah, that song went seven times platinum. You? They didn't. They didn't chip you off a little bit. But I didn't. I didn't have a contract with them. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, offset said, "You want to do it?" I said, "Yeah." And I, I, I didn't have an agent because I had no memory for six months after I got out. Mm -hmm. I, uh, wow. I, I could remember going forward, but I couldn't remember anything prior to my life. I mean, that's how sick I was. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I'd, I'd learn how to walk again. I'd learn how to. I mean, I uh, I couldn't even twist a bottle cap. Off. Did you Did you keep this private? Cause I don't remember hearing hearing about this. Did you? No, it made major made made oh, major okay. news. Yeah, then I had four heart four heart operations in seven weeks. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's that's a. Uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you're strong now. Yeah, though, man. thank I, you. I, I kicked, I feel hey, great. with you last night. You strong. I see it, man. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, dude. yeah. You <laughs> it's the power of the mind. It's the power of the mind. He got a strong mind. You man. don't lose a step, and That's he looks. Good. I mean, every time he comes, he has a brand new jacket, brand new dress. You the man, yeah, man. You don't. You don't I miss. Got, I got to be clear. I got to be clean for you. Yeah, we always got to be clean. Man, you the man. We all can yeah. take notes, guys. We all can take notes from Mr. Flair, man. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> and, and and the one thing, Rick, that a lot of people wonder is in terms of like the relationship with Undertaker. We saw him at that last match. You did. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your relationship with him? Oh, great. We we remain very close. What was it? What did it stem from? Like, how did you guys build such a good relationship? Just um, got along great socially, and I, I loved working with him. He's a, he's a great worker, man. Probably the you know when I say big man, I mean I, I'm not talking like Big Show or that, but it, Undertaker is is a great worker. I mean, he's di diving through the ropes at six ten, three hundred ten pound. I mean. Yeah, he's he's yeah a phenomenal. I, I've been I've been a, a, fan, cla a class act too. I've been a fan of him since he was the master of pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's been a wonderful guy. Did you guys hang out a lot outside of yeah, wrestling? Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. How did that come about? Just from being from the times of working. He was, he was with me one night when I lost one of my Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what happened? He was with me one night. I was with remember Harvey Grant, the basketball player. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, from the Washington Capitals. We were in Baltimore. We got drunk, and that's the night I lost my watch. I woke up with the two girls, and my watch was gone. I said, okay, what's going on in here, Tom, Dick, and Harry? You threw it up. You threw it up. The players forget and said you had 13 of them. Said, what? The players forget he said you <laughs> so you, you took it out of the plate of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Take it out of the plate of the spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. Where, where'd my wallet go? <laughs> <laughs> what city was this? You remember? Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. Yeah. You, I was just, oh, yeah, staying out of Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> At the Sheridan Hotel. <laughs> you, you called Undertaker to come help you? And no, no, he was already gone. <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> How'd you get your watch back? <laughs> How to get what? How'd you get your watch back? <laughs> I did. I had to fly to Philadelphia. I had to fly to Philadelphia with Thanksgiving and buy one and get back home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you flew to Philadelphia just to buy one? Because I had a friend who was a jeweler that I had one just like it. 
And I flew to Philadelphia from Baltimore and then flew home for Thanksgiving. And I wasn't showing up with all my Rolex on my way. Uh, my 12 year old daughter said, Did you get to watch that? I said, No, why? Because that one had baguettes on it rather than the diamond dial, right? <laughs> I said, no, it's the same watch. No, Dad has a new watch. When would you get that? <laughs> How the fuck does he know? I'm a 12-year-old. They know everything about me, right? So, oh. so then after, after about the third time, my wife goes. <laughs> <laughs> the heat lamp goes on. Where's your watch? I said, it's right here. She said, did you lose your watch? I said, no, mm-hmm. absolutely not. You, know, you never tell the truth your way. He <laughs> <laughs> been 100. Oh, he never been married. He don't know, hey, man. The minute, the minute you tell your wife the truth, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to stay true to whatever you tell her the first time. So that's the, the worst minute, thing that ever I, happened. I, I, if she caught me in bed with another woman, I said, you're, you're, you're imagining it. <laughs> the girl's not real. <laughs> the girl's not real. The girl's not real. <laughs> it's a figure of your imagination. You're poker. See, I told you, she's not real. <laughs> he said Damn. poker. He said poker, Rampage. Right, poker. Dude, she dude, ain't real. Dude, no, the funniest thing he said, though, was he had to fly to get another watch. Yeah. Because he lost. I, hey, I know how I feel. I just lost a, a bright. Uh, what did I lose? AP. AP. Uh, I just lost AP. Wow. Can I, can I, I, I understand. AP. But, yeah. listen, but listen, if I was married, I would have had to do what he did. Look, he had to fly. To get another motherfucker watch like the one he saw, and it wasn't exactly the same. His daughter caught it. Yeah, that was the funny it, it, shit. It had baguettes on it rather than a diamond dial. God damn! Yeah. How in the fuck? If my if my daughter caught some shit like that, I'd yeah. like, what the? Why are you shut your motherfucking yeah, ass yeah, up? Yeah, well, I couldn't say that to her. She's I like, know damn. that's what, but I know I can't say it to my. I'm thinking I put myself in your shoes because yeah, it's, it's dope. It's funny. I would have told my daughter, shut your little ass up. Girl. I tried. I stepped on her foot three times. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, in terms of traveling, you traveled all over the country. You're talking about Baltimore, Philadelphia. What was your favorite region to wrestle in? Oh, the Mid-Atlantic, all over. Baltimore was great. <laughs> Safari Club, <laughs> Chicago was great. Um, Philadelphia was great. Was there- Gre- Greensboro, Charleston, South Carolina, name it. What, what, oh, West Virginia was fun, uh, Charleston. Was there a crew that you liked wrestling with the most? Uh, that, that, well, you used to have that... Uh, the, the crew in the 80s was the best. Yeah. Who was it? Me, Aaron Tully, Barry. Um, God, everybody was that back then. You ever wrestled uh, with the Ultimate Warrior? I only, re- only worked with him twice. That was my favorite yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. How was he? He was okay. He didn't, he didn't have a lot of experience, but he was you know, a very colorful individual. Yeah, I used to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a big difference between guys that can sell the show and then guys that have experience in the ring? Yeah. Oh, difference. there is. Yeah, how how did you differentiate between that, or how do you like how were you able to tell? Well, you just you know when guy, you know when the guy's experience. I mean, re- really, after the Ultimate Warrior ran down to the ring yeah. and ran across the ring when the music stopped, the match was over. <laughs> 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 did he suck? Did he suck as a, as a wrestler? No, he just didn't have the. It, it wasn't that he couldn't do it; he just didn't have the experience. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. just like a big big guy. Yeah, I remember. I used to like. I used to oh, like. Yeah. You like him? I, I, I never met that. Man, I used to want to be, bro. I used to be. I used to be big as as fuck, bro. I used to want to be like He Man yeah. and, and Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, yeah that's why I got these big ass muscles. Look at that. shit. I used to want to dress like Rick when I was a kid. I used to try to get Rolexes and the Come on, polos man. and the alligators. I wasn't balling. I'm sorry. I wasn't balling like that. I saw yeah. how he was living. I was always a big fan. Trust me. Yeah. But I was like, man, I ain't balling like that. I don't like the front. See, he he grew up balling like nah, that. That's why he can afford all this shit. Nah, 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 I'm nah, telling nah, you. Nah. But I, you I like grew up limousine riding in the biggest house I on the biggest listen, hill. Bro, I love what are you talking about? I love, I'm, I'm his balling. You showed up to my charity event in a Lambo. Let me show you something. What are you talking about? Did he do this, though? Look at that. Did he do this, though? What this? Woo! I'm telling you, boy, I grew up, Rats, I'm just saying, I'm a big fan of all of them, but him, I love him, but I always look up to him, he was like, like this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was always like balling, I wasn't balling yet, I said, when I get like that, then I'm going to be like him. Amen. And then look at me now. Amen. Look at me now. Same balling. thing. Ro- my Rolex getting stolen, my jewelry. No, now you balling. Be- yeah, because got- now I'm balling. But I had to look up like this when I was a kid. You yeah, know, don't he don't right? understand. Rolex, he ain't no wrestler. Right? He don't respect you, don't like, you like I miss. respect you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, am, I wrestle like like, yeah, like I, I, I grew up wrestling I, I, like I've that. I've never had a platinum. I always liked the gold, but I love that. That's mm. a nice watch. That's, man, it's much respect, yeah. man. I I always look up to you like that. Thank you very much. We all did. Yeah, but not like not like I'm a real wrestler. I'm a real wrestler, brother. Woo! We could go in the <laughs> ring right now, and I'll show you a ladder match. Get a ladder. <laughs> you go get a ladder after this. We're going I'll in the ring. I'll, I'll jump off ass. the ladder right now. I'll jump on your head. Give me my belt. Give me my belt, please. Give me my belt. He think he's tough. 
What do you mean? I got a belt from Rosarito when I jumped off the top ropes. <laughs> he, put, he put me in a, in, a, in a Mexican wrestling league. They all have the masks and stuff. And I walked in there. Yeah, I he be looking like Nacho Libre. He be coming here sometimes. He be coming here sometimes looking like Nacho Libre. I call, yeah, I walked in with a little sword. I, my, 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 my name was Zorro. And I walked in with the sword. I started whipping people with the sword. I threw the sword in the audience. I jumped he's off the top ropes. He, 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 he was in love with a nun looking like Nacho, Nacho Libre. I didn't look like a nun. I looked like Zorro. I told you I was going to look like Zora. You bought me a nun costume. Yeah. So, Rick, as we start digesting, to, yeah, you give, me, give me my belt from Rosarito. Thank you, brother. Give me that thing. Come on. This is what I'm going to tell you like. what he's been doing. He's been beating up those little people. Intercontinental champion right here. Rick. I know. That, that, no, this, this is the, uh, the, old, the big gold. Yeah, you see that? He knows. Champions. No, no, that's his. That's his belt. He, this he is the, I was belt. the first one to ever, ever get this. What? No, what what's going yeah. on now? The... the, the I was the first one to ever get, ever get that belt. So, Rick. That's a duplicate. This is a duplicate, but I want to tell you something about yeah. this belt. Everybody that knows me knows I grew up loving you. So yeah. I went and found this belt online. Yeah. And it's it's the certificate of authentication. Yeah. And this was one of the original belts. Yes. That you came out with. So I went and bought it at yeah. an auction yeah. so I could have it here today. Wow. What would you pay for it? Uh, <laughs> uh, 18000 18000 Yeah. They told me it was solid gold. It it's fake. Oh my God, that's fake. You, that costs five hundred dollars. It's fake. Yeah, it costs five hundred dollars. No, somebody ripped yeah. you off. Travel, come look at this real quick. Don't tell me that. No. Look at it right Don't now. tell me that. No, no, it's it's fake. Hey, call the attorney, Vinny. Look, 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 look at they said that that's the certificate. No, no, heavy. No. The one that no, not even. The, the one that they know they shit, bro. Listen to them. Don't tell. Oh, don't say that. You got that, dude. You got that. Don't say that. I promise you. Vinny. Five hundred at the most. Don't say that. You got that. Oh, I feel bad for you, bro. I feel bad for you, though. You could go. Probably five times. They said this is real diamond. No, God no. Come on, man. Go get your money back, bro. Go get your shit back, homie. Let's fuck that. Hey, I ride with you, bro. Come on. Let's tweak them motherfuckers. Hey, let's blow them up, bro. Let's blow them up, man. They can't do you like that, fam. Toy figures. Toy company. Figures. Toy company. <laughs> Y'all, you trying to say you made it yourself? <laughs> Bro, they saying, they saying you made it yourself? <laughs> they said, sue yourself, nigga. Sit the, sit the fuck down. <laughs> what are we going to do with this? Okay. <laughs> huh? How you feel? How you feel? Oh, good. Rick? Good. You good? Yeah. Right. I, I was telling Rampage, we got to wrap this up. He's freaking out. He want to do another hour. I said, what's wrong with you? Another hour. Are you crazy? <laughs> nah, because I love you so much. Yeah. So we're we're gonna we're gonna I'll come back. Yeah, yeah, he'll come back. I'm, I'm he gonna knows. start coming out here more often. All right, I Great. love it here. It's the yeah, legend. You, this is one of the I'm greatest ever. Do it. We're, we're gonna stay here all week. As a matter of fact, now. All right. But if I can get in that, if you can give me that clinic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We'll take care of everything. We got that all covered. Don't worry about that. All right, as we wrap I, this up, I'm going to Chicago. You know, my friend Steve McMichael's got ALS. Mm. You know, Mongo. Mm. So I'm gonna go see him, and then I've got a signing on Saturday, and a signing on Sunday. So rather than go all the way back to Tampa, we're going to stay here and I head out there. Yeah, I like yeah. It. I, I, and I, anytime I can spend time with Adam and these guys, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So cool. we're going to wrap this up right now. We got the we got the legend Ric Flair. We had Chavo come in. We have the boys. We have the, the Woo Chew. I mean, we're here at the Jackson House, Rick. It's, it's an honor. I'm going to end you. it with this last question. I just want to know your favorite celebrity or wrestler to party with. I really like, I really like partying with but he, he he doesn't party like he used to. So, but when he's when he's out, I have, I have so much fun with the Undertaker. Still, when I see him, I mean, he, he can drink Jack. I mean, he's a, he's just a great guy. Um, right now, who do I hang out celebrity wise? God, I don't know. I I I, I gotta tell you, I have more fun with Darius Rucker at my birthday. Mm. Darius Rucker is, is a fun guy to party. The basketball with. player. Oh, the singer, Darius Rucker. Oh, 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 the country. Oh, yeah, he yeah. was in Hootie and the Blowfish. Wet, wet wagon and a wagon wheel and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 He's huge. He did a he song came, with that text. He, he came to my birthday party. He was fabulous. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. That's a good lineup. Yeah. I can't imagine Dar him. Darius Rucker, just, he, he just got divorced, you know, so. He's a, <laughs> he, he's, oh a, he's a cowboy. <laughs> We're going to have to wrap it up. Listen, I'm Bear DeGidio. This is Rampage Jackson on the Woo Choos. He's in Planet Jupiter. We're going, we're going to go celebrate Taco Tuesday and have a couple. Oh, oh we're going to hey, have a hey. couple. And we got Rick Flair. Oh, my God. Only. It's 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 3.30 East Coast time. Let's go get, get a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are out. You already know we what it is. We are going to daytime drink. Woo, woo, woo.